Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Real Podcasters, the show where we talk all things movies, TV shows, video games and a bunch of other things in no particular order. My name's Reagan and I'm joined once again by my committed co-host, it's the Dan. Hello everybody, we're taking another trip into the Hooniverse on today's episode, isn't that right Reagan? Uh, I mean, this is according to the script, and this is what I was planning for, so yeah. fingers crossed it is actually that. Good, yeah, uh, it's a good thing when your host actually does read the script. That That's good. Or starts writing, say, their script on the day of recording. It, it, you know, it happens on occasion. It wasn't actually this yeah, case. It's... I have been, have been doing it since, like, Sunday night-ish. Uh, yes. Yes, we are... We spoke about Doctor Who Series 7 last week, but obviously there was a little bit more that went on with Doctor Who in 2013. Um, I think it was for some... 50th anniversary crap. Um, so we're going to be 50th discussing that. 50th anniversary crap. <laughs> that isn't actually a spoiler for what I think of the 50th. It's, you know, it's fine. Uh, we'll be talking about the Day of the Doctor. We'll also be talking about all the other stuff that went on around that time, as well as uh, the episode where the actor Matt Smith was sadly killed by a bunch of Daleks and severe old age. Uh, the time of the Doctor. Um, that's going to be an interesting one to talk about. I've never actually spoken about this episode. I think it's all of you. Um, no, no, this, uh, this is like a first time, yeah, it's Ooh. a first time. Ooh. Um, but yes, we shall be talking about those. Um, I'd also like to uh, briefly address um, the elephant in the room, or the lack of elephant in the room, and that is the uh, dog soldiers commentary we were going to do. So I actually completely forgot a reference this last, in last episode, um, but we literally recorded it the day after we did that one. Uh, um, long story short, we, we did a commentary for the Neil Marshall film Dog Soldiers. It's a very good film, um, not, obviously, because how are I don't think I've met anyone who doesn't like it. Um, there's been a lot of internet I- issues in the last week, so I haven't actually gotten around to uploading it. It should be coming out on Wednesday, I think, now. So if anyone's interested in that, it's a little bit more I- experimental. I don't think we'll be doing it's it very very, often, very chilled out, very chilled out. Very I'll chilled say. out, very, very, chilled very out. sweary. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll, we'll give the person who manages to tally up how many times we mention the word sausages in that commentary and we will mention you on the next episode. It's 37, so you so you get to mention me. It isn't actually 37, I just came up with a random number, if I'm completely honest. Um, but yes, that'll be coming out later on in the week after this one. But first, as ever, we're going to be discussing our playlists and there's time codes in the description if people care. So, as ever, because it's more interesting, and because I'm dreading the number he's going to come up with this week, it's Dan's playlist. Dun, dun, dun. Right, so last week was 40, yeah. It was. Last week was 40. Uh, this week it's 32. <sighs> just typical, honestly. Typical. Yeah, right, I'm typical. just going to go into it while you just sit in anger there, <laughs> sipping your lemonade. Okay, so we're starting off with the most mellow game ever, Slime Rancher. I'm just addicted to this thing. I don't know why. It's just the most mellow game ever. Like, it's just so chilled out. There's no no thought required. It's just peace. Peace and tranquility. Imagine that now. Yeah, you you basically just go, like, round discovering slimes and making little ranches. It's pretty adorable, not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> it's it's adorable. You, you'll become very addicted to it if you play it. And this, the second game is coming out, I think, 22nd of September or something like this. Oh, on, smashing! Thank on God! On the Xbox. <laughs> on the Xbox, PC, and probably PS4 or whatever. I don't know. So, now we go to when we did the commentary. We really watched Dog Soldiers, of course. Did we? <laughs> yeah! Wow. Dog Soldiers, and a first time watch for me was, in fact, the five-ish Doctors. I've never laughed so hard in my life. No, you haven't. It was absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely smashing. Uh, an audible entry now with the original Ghostbusters. I picked this up, like, well, I, I think it was like, included in my membership or something, so I listened to that one and Ghostbusters 2. Not really much difference, but the second one feels so much shorter compared to the film. Like, I think the film, it really drags out, but the the novel version of it is really condensed down. Right. It's really short, and it ends really abruptly as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then. Uh, I, was, I was never big on Ghostbusters 2 anyway, so I mean, that... Yeah, it's... better than, I guess? 
it's it's okay, I guess, but it's it's nothing compared to the original. Sure, the second one has its fun moments, but yeah, I don't really like the idea of mood slime. But hey ho, I don't know. I mean, like the toaster. I like that. <laughs> yeah, the toaster was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Stranger Things episode, well, season three now. Season three, That's getting cool. there, getting there. Yeah, uh, I've watched the entirety of season three now. Okay, so at what point are we going to do a Stranger Things podcast episode now? Give, give it, have to give do it, it a, a few lot. weeks, because honestly, I'm just going to end up finishing season four while I'm on holiday, probably. Even though, like, every single episode is, like, an hour at least. There is it's no fine. minimum. There's, like, Jeez. I think the last episode is, like, two and a half hours long. Two hours 21, I think it is? Yeah, so it's nearly Ouch. two hours and a half. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it'll be fine. I've watched longer things. <clears throat> Justice League. <clears throat> stop stop talking about long shittest down. league more like mm. yeah. just ice so the new ta- the new tailor the new tailor for terrifier 2 <laughs> <laughs> the new trailer for terrifier 2 was put out i can't wait for this i loved terrifier i can't wait for this it looks so bloody good i didn't know and it was even good. a thing <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's coming out very soon yeah soon Another trailer, and this is just by far the longest ever trailer I have ever watched. Hulu's Hellraiser, a whopping 14 seconds long. Oh, yeah. Wait, hang on a second. Are you really classing trailers in your playlist? Because that oh, is yeah. cheating. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it's it's upcoming release, so I'm obviously going to count it. But, yeah, nothing was exactly shown in this trailer. But yeah, I thought I'd mention that anyway because, let's face it, Hellraiser as a franchise pretty much went downhill. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wouldn't Bradley seen the first downhill. One. Yeah, just just stick with the first one. But I own the trilogy. Okay, Min- the trilogy mi- is minus the other four. Right. Hellraiser two Hellbound is fine. Oh, it's cool. fine. Hellraiser three. Mm. Mm. Bloodline Hellraiser 4 is okay. It's okay when you look into why it's an okay film and why okay. it could have been a better film. Right. Inferno, no. Hellseeker, absolutely not. Which is the one with Henry Cavill? Because I swear that Cavill's in one of those. Uh, Hellraiser, Hellworld, and that is just an utter abomination. It also stars Lance Hendrickson as well. Yay. It's just no. Bishop and Zoom. Hellraiser Revelations, no. That that just should not exist. And Hellraiser Judgment, no. <sighs> they just don't, 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 don't exist. Don't exist. One of these days, you will actually be able to sell me on, on watching a film because you're not doing a very good job right now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, though, like, Hellraiser 4 has a really good behind the scenes if you look into it properly. And mm-hmm. you like it a little better because you realise what went absolutely wrong because <laughs> a lot of went wrong yeah okay fair enough <laughs> so next up we have doctor who series eight i i had to do multiple sittings of this and i'll explain why so the first day i just watched episode one to four mm-hmm. then the next day i watched four to eight uh-huh. then <laughs> eight to twelve <laughs> And then the day after was the Christmas special, Last Christmas. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Dan's usually watched a Doctor Who series in, like, you know, a day, maybe two. Yeah, I'm... This I'm, was really difficult to get through. I'm very... in. I mean, we're not actually going to be doing Series 8 until, I think, October, unless things change with your holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, although, probably not. We'll probably just keep it till October. Um, but th- that's going to be what I'm... I'm I'm more interested in talking about that one now than I initially was because even I hadn't watched series eight for a very long time. I don't usually go back to it that often. Um, yeah, but I know you found it a bit bland. Yeah, bland might be a bit of an understatement. About as bland as Peter Capaldi's short hair in series eight, which I don't like. <laughs> the I only like thing I can really thatch. say it that has got my interest is Clara is no longer a freaking plot device. She's, she, 
she's almost a character. It's great. Isn't no, it? <laughs> almost. she's almost a character. <laughs> yeah, there there are some episodes in this season that are generally quite good, especially towards the end of the series. I I was a lot more interested in those ones, but the first episode, I quite like. It's grown on me. Hmm. Okay. Especially towards the end as well, for that very heartfelt moment. <sighs> mm. <laughs> but everything else is just a bit hit and miss, mostly miss, because... Ugh, yikes. And the Christmas special, of course, starring Nick Frost as Santa Claus, something I never thought I'd see in my whole life. Turns out I've never watched this Christmas special, ever. Well, because I feel like we're at the point now where you haven't, you haven't kept, kept up with it now, have you? You know, the funny thing is, I've actually seen a few from Series 8, but they're, they're very, like, hickledy-pickledy. It turns out that I definitely saw the first one. I've also seen the two with Missy, slash Mistress, slash Lady Doctor, Master, Thing. Thing? <laughs> <laughs> the Thing. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, well. <laughs> and j- just some weird, weird episodes starring weird creatures that have telepathic powers to just melt your mind, apparently. Oh, yeah, the teller. The tether. The teller. Teller. The The teller. teller. Yeah, the teller. Hardcore. A random episode of The Simpsons, and it's by far my favourite Simpsons episode ever. The Simpsons Files. Uh, I think I'm vaguely... I think, I mean, that one sounds quite early on, so I have probably seen that one. It's Series 8, Episode 10. Okay, so I've probably seen it at some point. It's basically the one where they spot something in the woods and it turns out it's Mr. Burns with an alien glow. And it's so funny. Yeah, I remember that one. I bring you peace. (laughs) Oh, I love that episode. It's so bloody funny. A couple of games now. Batman, Arkham Asylum. I've Still. done 85% of the Riddler challenges. You have no life. Yes, yeah, I, I don't. I really <laughs> don't. Uh, I'm not going to really do like the full completion of the things. I just wanted the achievement of it. So instead, I'm going to be starting it on hard, doing it on hard, and probably just doing a few of the challenge achievements. But it's really nice. going to irritate me that because they are very, very annoying. Yeah, You basically naturally. just can't get hit. And you win. But, you know, it's kind of difficult when you've got, like, two titan thugs and a bunch of dudes with electric sticks and Ugh, guns. Titan. Yeah. <sighs> mm. Yeah. Mm. And lastly, we have Dying Light. My controller was knackered, so <clears throat> I attempted to play this on keyboard, and it was an absolute nightmare. I bet. So I did... A little bit of it on keyboard before I just got too frustrated with it, and then I went to number thirty-three actually, which was Lego Batman Three Beyond Gotham. <laughs> <For> God's sake! <laughs> I never got very far in that one. I, I don't no. think I was big on it. Um, put it this way, my controller was still knackered, and it, it's just absolute purgatory on keyboard and mouse. I've never wanted to play a game on keyboard. Like, that sounds like the worst thing in human history. Well, you know what it is, right? It's thing, fine but... when they're simple controls. Like, Left 4 Dead, right? It's fine. Because all it is is the movement keys, crouch, reload, and, you know, the mouse wheel to, like, scroll between items. There's none of this, like, combining buttons to to do this, that, and the other like it is on Assassin's Creed. Mm. Like, no. I would never, ever do that. I would never, ever play an Assassin's Creed game on keyboard and mouse because it's far too hard. (laughs) But yes, that is everything for this week. No, I missed one off. I apologise. Black Mirror, the National Anthem. Oh, that's the first one, isn't it? (laughs) I think it is. Is it the first one? It it was for a time being, and then they shifted it around because I was reading some reviews on Letterboxd and some people really didn't like that it was the first episode. I was going to say, this one is the Prime Minister one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was. The Prime Minister and the Pig episode. I don't know. Any, I don't know. Any, I think, think I watched like the first five minutes, and that's about it. It's basically just a, a version of the scandal that was faced with the Prime Minister supposedly having intercourse with the pig. Because he probably still is. Oh, I, what, actually, no, because it's different now, because the pig is the Prime Minister. Ha ha! That's, that joke has never been made once, ever. Nope. 
<laughs> nope, what's... congratulations, nope. you have invented something. I'm so... But yeah, that is now everything. I'm just double-checking I've messed up anything. No, that's everything. Yeah, that, that is everything. Mm. I mean, okay. uh, Lego Batman 3, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> I'm about halfway through the first one because, as I say, a keyboard and mouse just made my life absolute hell. Mm. <laughs> so, I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to wait till my new controller arrives. Yeah, it's never something I'm, I'm ever going to do. I really couldn't. Um, okay. My turn. Yes. Um, I'll kick off with the games first. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm now on New Game Plus. Um, so this is literally just restarting the game, but but any of the collectibles and weapons and costumes and shit you got in the regular version, you get a keep, and the mm -hmm. difficulty is just bumped right up, and enemies are a little bit more dickish. Um, I'm looking forward to talking about this in more depth um, in a little while because uh, it is the 15th anniversary of Assassin's Creed this year so we've decided to do an episode on that. I think it's going to be some point in November. I think I planned that. I say I think. I know I planned it like that. but you know. Okie doke. Well, it looks like I've got some games to play. <laughs> well, it's not like you have any... It's not like you have anything else to do, frankly. I mean, I can't watch a bunch of films, but you know. No, you can't. Oh. <gasps> Oh, you know what? Just to take the piss, maybe instead of doing 15 years of Assassin's Creed, we just watch 15 minutes of the Assassin's Creed film. No, let's not. Let's just stick with the original <laughs> plan. <laughs> uh, that is uh, that is barely a film. No, I mean, it, it was definitely shot with... No. I mean, I mean, it was definitely no. shot with cameras. No. Just, just stop. Just just be quiet now. Just stop. Are you fine? We'll stop. <clears throat> Continue. Oh, thank you. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but um, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to talking about Origins because I absolutely adore this thing. Um, I haven't played sure. too much of it, but by God, I love it. It's beautiful, especially on, on, the, on the Xbox Series consoles. It looks absolutely impeccable. Um, yeah, I, I literally just finished like the first mission, and just from the moment you could just ride around on a camel and in control of a camel, I was like, you've got me. You have me now. You've got me hooked. Yeah, one of the one of the mounts you can have, I swear, I swear is like an alien camel. I just started calling it the spammel, and it's and it's fucking terrified of everything. Spammel. I swear to God, I get off and it just fucks off. <laughs> See, <laughs> <Honestly>. yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, I might prefer Odyssey. I don't know. But I tell you what, I don't prefer uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I've I've just started playing again. Um, finally, yes. this is like a little, this is like a little, little nitpick for me, but I completely forgot that with this game technically being primarily for the console that I've got, or at least one of them, um, you've got performance modes and um, high quality modes. So basically, one of them ups the graphics but keeps it at thirty frames per second. Other one is sixty, um, and it's reduced a little bit. Um, and it was always on the thirty. And after playing Origins and Odyssey. With like with like the super high frame rate, I was like, this this feels like it's twenty fifteen. I don't like yeah. this. Um, so I was able to change and start start playing it again. There's just mm -hmm. some weird little quirks in it that I really don't like. Um, Isn't that the one with like the stamina introduced and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. So that so that was ten, Ubisoft introduced that with Immortals: Phoenix Rising, which I'll be playing again in a couple of days because that comes to Game Pass again. So I can actually play it again because I technically own the game, but it's 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 a disc, which I can't play anymore because I don't have a ah, disc yes, drive. You, you have the disc. You have the disc driveless console. Well, because it's the only one that's available that isn't for six hundred and fifty million babies, and the one that I doesn't mean, look like a mini fridge too. Quid. Yeah, that. Um, but yeah, that one's been interesting to play again. But it's just just some weird little quirks. Um, mm -hmm. Continuing on with a bunch of episodes of Horrible Histories, still on series four, not nearly as many as I as I have uh, in previous episodes. Just just been doing other things really. Um, I also watched the Five Ish Doctor's reboot. We weirdly enough, I'm pretty certain there was someone on my couch watching it and crying with laughter. I think it was you. I'm pretty certain it was you. It could be. <sighs> or was it Michael Myers? I think I would have preferred to be on the couch with with a serial killer, if I'm honest. I, I think it wouldn't, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is like the third or fourth watch of this this year. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, it's, it was absolutely it's not, hilarious. It's not going to be the last, quite frankly. Um, and I also watched Dog Soldiers. Um, 
again, that's just weird. What a coincidence, frankly. Um, so you'll get to hear our uh, fairly techy, um, lengthy thoughts on the film on Wednesday. Technically, when you get to listen to us watch the film and talk about it. Um, as I say, that's very experimental, whether or not we do that again. Petrol permitting, frankly, because petrol's feckin' expensive now. I wonder why. Um, next up was a first-time watch of Bill. This is the um, this is the comedy film made by the team who did Horrible Histories, uh, largely the same cast. Um, Monty Python-esque in the sense that they're all playing um, multiple characters. Um, okay. Is it Monty Python I'm thinking of, or is it Blackadder? I forget which one. It's one of those. Uh, or it's probably closer to um, like The League of Gentlemen which I also really like. Um, so this is like a comedy version of William Shakespeare, or as he's called, Bill, <laughs> um, who goes off to London to become a playwright and hilarity ensues. Um, decidedly less full of sketches as I thought it was going to be. Like, I honestly figured it was going to be like the Horrible Histories movie, which is just an 86-minute sketch, mm-hmm. which doesn't work. Like, it's not very funny at all. Um but this, but this one was pretty funny. I, I, I definitely had a laugh with that one. Um, okay. First episode of The Sandman on Netflix. Um, Ooh, well, let me know what your thoughts are because I'm very keen on watching. Let's just say this. I haven't watched the other ten episodes, but because you know they vary. Um, I did actually quite like this one. This one was quite, quite interesting, um, especially okay. for someone who knows bugger all about the source material. I mean, all I know is that apparently it was, you know, similar to Watchmen in that it's, um, it's almost impossible to adapt and has, and, you know, there's been attempts in the past. Um, this one was quite interesting. Quite interesting. I can't, I'm not going to say too much okay. only because there's still bits I'm still a little bit confused with. Um, visually, it's absolutely stunning. Looks absolutely fantastic. Decidedly more mm-hmm. swearing in it than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> like, like, like certain ones I wasn't expecting. Um, yeah, I've heard it's very sweary. <laughs> that's that's what yeah, one of the words was. It's very sweary. Yeah, very very sweary. Not that that's really an issue. I mean, you know, I've watched five Transformers films, and all all those have some <laughs> of the worst kind of swearing you've ever seen in a rate of twelve. It, it just has to have like explicit plus on it. Yeah, you should do. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty good actually. Um, initially, I was going to try and watch a few more, but as I say, it's Mm-hmm. Um, it's the kind of one I'd like. I'd like to pace myself a little bit. Um, I think you've got it with the Sandman, like because I've heard like you've binging it is probably you're gonna lose interest to it. Is what people yeah, have been pr- saying. It's pretty heavy, and that's and that's even on the first episode. Um, yeah, I've also watched a bit of Doctor Who series eight. Not a lot, because similar to series seven, I wanted to pick and choose. So I watched episode four. Listen, um, Stephen Moffat's smallest episode in years. Quite frankly, um, and then I then I've skipped right past time heist <laughs> Ugh. and the caretaker to kill the moon. That one, I I'm. C- I don't know. I, I, uh, mm. I've never seen an episode be so polarizing since uh, series twelve's the time the timeless children, which you'll figure out in a few months when I subject you to that fecal matter. <laughs> One day, I'm not going to reference that, but how are you? Um, I've also now seen the first two episodes of She-Hulk. I've now watched them. I'm yet to watch the second one because I've only watched the first one and I didn't really fancy watching the second one just yet because I'd rather just watch Stranger Things, being honest. I mean, the CGI occasionally is pretty fantastic. I'll give them that. (laughs) Occasionally pretty fantastic. Um, Otherwise, eh... Do you know what it is? I mean, Somebody made, like, a really good opinion on it. Like, we go from all this, like, like the Incredible Hulk film, right? Like, with Abomination and stuff like this. Like, reading behind the scenes, it took, like, 37 cameras or something and a load of motion capture. Something like that. Yeah. And he's like, not every single Marvel character needs to be funny. And I just thought that was so spot on. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, I mean that's something that's been an issue with, with the MCU for a while. It's just adding humour when it wasn't needed. Like, Thor, Love and Thunder, I think, think was the worst offender. Like, it was too funny for its own yeah. right. Like, I couldn't take it seriously. 
it was way too funny for its own for its own good really yeah um yeah it's i don't know it's again as someone who actually quite likes that character anyway i would have preferred mm-hmm. something closer to hell even something more closer to the incredible hulk animated series i think that would have been yeah. quite fun um but, yeah i mean what what are your thoughts on it like obviously with it just being two episodes in we can't really say too much but what what are your kind of general thoughts on it because i think it's all right so far fourth wall breaks are pointless like i don't get it frankly um i also really dislike the fact that like everyone absolutely adores jennifer like from the outset like they're just she's just so goddamn perfect i'm like oh here we go again um <laughs> though i did like her in play with bruce i quite like that and even with abomination i mean i mean tim roth is actually still quite good um, I was just trying to figure out the timeline more than anything else. I'm like, okay, so it's after most of the... Oh, no, it's not. There's some other stuff. Oh, okay. What's... Yeah. Um, I'm just looking forward to when Wong makes his uh, his obligatory appearance back in the MCU because he's in everything now. It's MCU Phase Wong. Phase Wong. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh... I've seen worse from the MCU, it's especially this year. Um, but, you know, we've got seven more episodes, so here we go. Um, next up was Samaritan. This is the new Amazon Prime superhero, dark superhero thing starring Sly Stallone, a.k.a. Rocky. Ah, I yes, I saw this advertised on my uh, Fire Stick today. Critics like, seem oh. to really hate it. <laughs> Like, of course they do. They just seem to hear anything with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, so um, I actually think it's all right. I actually found myself quite enjoying it. I mean, it's by no means original at all. It is actually based on a graphic novel from 2014, but no. All right, I'll have to look into that. Um, but it's it's just funny that Sylvester Stallone has appeared in a superhero film before with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I think he's in the third one as well. But it's the first time he's actually been a superhero in something. I was like... Yeah, uh, you know, where he literally... actually has a role as said superhero. Yeah, um, I'm actually not going to see it too much because the stuff that happens in it that I didn't actually know was a thing. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to give anything away. I actually quite like stuff that it does. Um, very Logan-esque, but somehow mm-hmm. even darker. <laughs> mostly just because everything's, <laughs> mostly because everything's set at night. Um, but it's really actually the little kids that's, that's in it. He's basically like the focal point beyond Sylvester Stallone. He's actually really really good I, I really liked him quite a bit um but yeah it was actually yeah, it was better than what other people have been seeing okay now uh, top gun maverick i've seen it now hmm. i didn't see it in cinemas i watched it on i'm gonna guess what you've rated this i'm gonna guess okay. what you've rated this okay now bear in mind i've not seen your review of it or anything like this now, if I know you, if I know you, Regan Inglis, four out of five. Uh, I think that's what I actually gave it. <laughs> huh. Woohoo! Con- congratulations, you you now have the option to watch another ten or fifteen films next week. Busted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't lose my mind over this in the same way that other people have. Like, I don't think it's one of the best sequels ever made. It's far superior to the first film, though. Like, I don't, I don't care for the first one at all. Um, but there's a great, um, there's a great little uh, review that someone gave on Letterboxd from Patrick Willems. He's a pretty famous YouTuber on on here as well. Um, mm-hmm. His his review was something along the lines of, I mean, yeah, the you know the action's awesome and the third act is one of the finest in recent memory. But it's just nice for Tom Cruise to make a film where he acknowledges he's, he's getting older. Because he's kind of been against that, quite frankly. Like, I can still remember in the Mummy reboot that he did, and there's a line from Russell Crowe where, where he calls Tom Cruise a younger man. I'm like, Tom Cruise is two years older than you? <laughs> like, <laughs> how weird. Um, weird. The Mummy the mummy reboot has Russell Crowe in it. I'm not going to tell you who he plays, because it's... <laughs> All, all I know is South Park just ruined that. I mean, the film ruined itself, frankly. Oh, well, yeah, of course, because, you know, yeah. nobody needed it, but hey-ho. Um, 
it's but even yeah, worse I, than the Tomb of the Emperor <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, actually, yeah, actually, it is worse. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I mean, the flying in this is far superior to that to that first one. I mean, the vast majority is all, all. Yeah, in I've camera. I've also seen that people have just said that this is just far superior to many of the sequels and the first film in itself. Yeah. It's it works so much better, but also because there's an actual mission, which I didn't, which, which there wasn't one in Top Gun. It was just them training all the time. This one actually has an actual mission that they have to do, and I was like, "That's awesome." But is it impossible? No. Well, very, <laughs> all, very <laughs> almost. Um, I find it quite funny though that I mean, not to spoil it, if you do end up watching this, um, it basically rips off a new hope. By the end, <laughs> which right. I wasn't expecting. Oh, um, that being said, you know it's more of a homage than like a rip off. It, you know, it works really well, um, mm-hmm. and especially when I'm like literally tensing on, on the chair, just like watching it as like the flying around. Like I didn't get that with the original film at all. It works so much better. Um, so, yeah, props to that. Um, Jonathan Creek. Um, have you ever watched uh, Jonathan Creek? If you even know what it even nope. is. Not even heard it. Okay. Um, so it stars Alan Davies, who I know primarily from QI on Dave. Um, this is basically like a detective series that he did back in the 90s. Um, or he's kind of like an illusionist that helps us solve crimes because he's like a magician's like assistant and stuff like that. Um, All right. One of, my, one of my girlfriend's favourite shows just ended up randomly watching one episode of that. It was quite funny how the beginning of that series, the first two, well, the first two episodes are technically one story, so it's decidedly longer. So we'd watched that months ago, so we watched episode three, and I was waiting for, like, something big as it happened, and then it ended. And I was like, uh, oh. <laughs> I was expecting, like, an hour and a half here as opposed to 50 minutes. Um... But I actually forgot how much I like it. I like it quite a bit. Even for someone who, you know, found Alan Davies pretty funny. You know, he's got that kind of dry humour more than anything else. But he's actually a pretty good actor as well. Um, it's also just nice seeing 4x3 TV. It's quite, it's you know, it's very, very, very nostalgic. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I quite like this. Um, <laughs> okay, all of these are in like the last 24 hours. So... Quickly, How to Train Your Dragon Two, <laughs> because we now own all three films. Um, oh yeah, it is a trilogy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I absolutely love How to Train Your Dragon Two. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The villain is pretty weak, though. Um, bit of a waste of Jimon Horns, who's incredible talent. Um, but it's really damn good. No offense, I now I have to say that the best dragon in cinema history is Toothless. It's just a rule now because he's adorable. <laughs> I want a toothless. Yeah, I, um, would, I would happily own a toothless too. Yeah. Um, the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special on Disney Plus. Um, still better than Episode 9. Far, far <laughs> funnier, just far better. Um, <laughs> More interesting, just everything, really. Yeah, even if it just, even if by the end you realise, oh, the entire thing is reared just learning to be a Jedi Master by stealing information by 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 previous Jedi Masters. <laughs> it's like, eh, excellent. The Jedi um, descending espionage. Yeah. Although it's nice seeing three, three generations of Obi-Wan Kenobi saying, hello there, together. It was, it was pretty funny. I laughed at it a little bit too hard. Um, there's even a Mandalorian cameo and it's cute. It's quite cute. cute. <laughs> um, an adventure in space and time, which I don't know if you ever watched. We'll talk about that in a, very, very soon. Um, the original pilot of An Unearthly Child from 1963. This is available oh, on right. Brickbox. Um, <laughs> number of changes um, for one in this one. Susan Foreman doesn't sound like a teenager. When she should, because she's what fifteen, I think. The saying this, yeah, um, some, yeah. The doctor's costume is also a little bit different. He's also decidedly uh, angrier, a little bit ruder. 
Um, it doesn't seem very warm at all. Um, they also reference Susan being from the 49th century, which I'm like, that's a bit too specific, quite frankly. I don't like that. <laughs> that's very specific, let yeah. alone too specific. <laughs> There's also the issue with the TARDIS doors. When they're in the console room, the doors keep on opening. Um, right. And you can see people shuffling in, in the background <laughs> trying to close it, <laughs> as in literally behind, behind the round things, uh, which, I, which I thought was pretty funny, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's... You you can see why 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 they reshot virtually all of us, um, yeah. and you gotta love how clearly um, the set wasn't finished because one of the walls of the TARDIS is just cloth, with with the round things sort of crudely <laughs> drawn on, like ah oh, British nineteen sixties sci fi oh, TV yep. at its fucking finest. <laughs> oh yeah, especially the uh, the cardboard cutout Daleks. Oh. Luckily, there's none of those to be found. Although there is a cardboard cut out of Susan Foreman. Oh no, wait, no, that is actually just the actress. She just isn't very good in this one. Ouch. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Um, and finally, Doctor Who series eight finished off with Mummy on the Orange Express. Um, we'll talk about that in a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that is it for me this week. Um, as I say, I've watched a few things. Like one, like one or two things. What, just um, a couple? Yeah, a couple. Uh, but now we are still going to be talking about Doctor Who with the 50th anniversary specials, we'll just call it, because there's a few things to talk about. Um, so, as I say, we've obviously got the 50th anniversary special itself, the Day of the Doctor. We've got the Time of the Doctor, which is a Christmas special, and there's a bunch of other things that we'll talk about. Um, I figured we'll address some of the origins of the Day of the Doctor before we actually delve into the episode itself. Because it's quite interesting. Um, so, uh, I didn't reference this in the name of the Doctor one when we talked about Series 7 last week. Um, the original script wasn't finished for that. Um, in fact, it ended at the point when the Doctor goes into his own time stream and there's just a little comment from Stephen Moffat saying, uh, we'll figure this out before we film the 50th. <laughs> <laughs> Because he literally, because in reality, um, nobody was under contract to appear in the 50th. The only person that was actually under contract was Jenna. Of course. That's it. <laughs> so, um, you know, she's a fantastic actress, but mm, need a bit more than that, I'm afraid, Stephen. Yeah. Um, so one of the little ideas he had was um, Clara's stuck in the Doctor's time stream, and after he's gone in, he's wiped from existence completely. And Clara's trying to remember him. So, so she's watching um, other versions of the Doctor played by a slew of very famous people. He doesn't say who, because, you know, Brad Pitt as the sixth Doctor. <laughs> I'd like oh. that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, mean, I mean, she's watching these versions of the Doctor and she's like, that's actually real, that isn't, that is, that isn't, blah, blah, blah. Um, obviously, that was never going to go at all people would hate us and rightfully so it sounds terrible um of course the other elephant in the room is one christopher of eccleston so um obviously people immediately assumed okay it's going to be the 50th we're going to have 11 we're going to have 10 and we're going to have nine and that's actually how it was going to go for the majority of the scripts until stephen finally got in touch with eccleston and they actually met twice uh, to read the script, and Eccleston said, "No, obviously he's not in it." <laughs> no, plot twist. He actually said yes, but he forgot the filming dates. <laughs> no, um, so he's he's been more open about this more recently about how it didn't really. He felt that that script didn't do justice to the Ninth Doctor, and he felt that the script was better without without the Ninth Doctor in it. Um, so at that point, we get the creation of the War Doctor, played by the f most famous actor on the planet, John Mr. Hurt. Mr. John Hurt. Um, um, designed um, specifically um, in terms of like casting John Hurt as someone who could, who could have potentially appeared as the Doctor in that time period when the show was cancelled. Um, which I actually think was a good move. I actually could have seen like a younger John Hurt as the Doctor. I think that would have been quite good, to be honest. Oh yeah, it would have been great. It would have been good. Yeah, but the actual episode itself, the Day of the Doctor, 
Um, I think general thoughts first before we delve into a couple of the nitty gritty things. Um, how are you on this nine years on? I mean, with a quite recent rewatch from series seven, mm. I think it's safe to say that I, I think upon revisiting it, I've I've liked it a lot more over the years. Oh, okay. At first, I was just like, eh, 50th anniversary, no biggie. But wow. over the years, I've just thought, okay, yeah, this has become, like, one of my favourites now. I mean, it's so good. And, I mean, the name of the Doctor, Day of the Doctor, Night of the Doctor, they're all really good in the way they interconnect with each other. But I think John Hurt as the War Doctor is just absolutely terrific. Mm. Oof. Yeah, it's, I mean... It's weird how I, I mean I didn't become a Hoovian until 2010, so even by the time that this came out, I was like stalked to stalked to high heaven. I didn't actually see it in cinemas, which is which I was actually able to. I did have the option to go and see it in cinemas because um, it was playing not too far from where I lived, and I thought eh, I could just watch it for free on the telly. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, um, it was actually me, my sister, and my stepbrother all just all just like sat in the bedroom watching it. Um, and there's never really been a moment since then, naturally, maybe until the 60th, but probably not because 50, 60, you know. Um, there's still a lot that works in this episode. I don't love it nearly as much as I used to, but that's mostly mm-hmm. down to what comes after that this tries to set up and then it's a bit pointless in places. Sorry. It's a, it's um, a bit of a funny one at times, I think. It's a bit yeah. of a funny one. It's nice to see aspects of the Time War, finally. I figured they were going to do that for the 50th because it's, it's a big enough event. Um, no, it's, it's not like we've had like you know nearly 50-odd years of them mentioning Time War and then nothing at all. And it's like, oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously seeing Gallifrey again. We've got our first big budget multi-Doctor episode, so naturally it was going to... It works um, pretty well. Um, yeah. And for the most part, I think the ending kind of works. I do want to address John Hurt as the War Doctor, though. So, he's obviously introduced at the very end of the name of the Doctor um, as the one who broke the promise. He's clearly done something absolutely horrifying and terrible and all that crap that we don't actually see. Like, you see him in this episode, he's lovely, he's sweet. And doesn't, I mean, like, doesn't looks... really do his name justice, does it? It's like War Doctor, but like he's nice and sweet. Yeah, it's like he's too warm, quite frankly. And I know that like some of this is fleshed out in the more expanded media. That doesn't count for me personally, really, because it's not in this story. Yeah. Um, and it just, I'm not big on this. I mean, I love John Hurt. I think like the performance is absolutely spot on. I do really like the outfit as well. I do I do really like that. Um, yeah, the outfit's really good. The exterior of the TARDIS is pretty badass. Um, I kind of hate the interior. It looks very, very last minute. Just like, oh, we'll put the tenant in one. Oh, no, we should make it all classic. Yeah, we'll just put the round things in the background. And you're just all like, what the hell have you done? It, <laughs> what have you done, like Steve? The, uh... Like the old master episodes where like the TARDIS is just the G black circles. <laughs> yeah, it's just like oh oh it looks evil. Clever. Yeah. <laughs> Clever. Oh, honestly. Um Yeah, it's I'm not I'm not big on it, frankly. As I say, I do really like the performance, but the characterization is just really off for someone who's supposed to in a way he could have been the main villain and think I think that would have actually been quite fun. I would have liked to have seen the hero and the villain be the Doctor in both instances. I think that that would have been quite good. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, as I say, we get to see more of the Time War. Um, it's just a bit annoying that it's just like a big like military kind of thing, especially when you hear you at the end of the end of time when he's talking about like the Nightmare Child and all the all the stuff that goes on. I'm thinking something a little bit more cosmic, but then I but then I realised, yeah. oh yeah, it's the BBC in 2013. It doesn't really have a budget, so we can't really do that. <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> I think the only other time they mention the Nightmare Child is like some tenant episode. I think it's like the the Davros one. Oh it's yeah. Like obviously, t- tenant mentions that that like the last time he saw Davros was in the jaws of the Nightmare Child or something like that. I love how you can remember that and I didn't. 
like entirely, <laughs> completely. Well, I mean, I, I've I've been watching the series well before you did, so it's probably no wonder I can remember that. Yeah, Even I'll if Davros Paris. is just a pet in that episode, but hey, good. Well. He's fucking useless. I hate Davros. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. But we do, obviously, as we say, we have the return of the Tenth Doctor, played by one Davith Tennant. Um, I've got three words, initially, before I get into more. God. That. Hair. <laughs> I hate his hair. <laughs> like, I know he was busy filming a bloody thing, it's a thing at the time, but bollocks to that, he could have just put a little bit of gel in. Like, I know, it's so messy. <laughs> You've also got to love when when him and the Eleventh Doctor first meet and the Eleventh Doctor's like, oh, he's so he's so very skinny. I'm like, no, he's not. You are actually skinnier than him now. It's yeah. only been three years. <laughs> oh, uh, in all seriousness, you know what it is? I mean, the, the bit about Tennant's hair is that little bit that just hangs in front. It's just like, could you just, like, you know, just whoop, and just stick it up? <laughs> I wouldn't care. Like towards the end, when when the War Doctor references Bad Wolf, and then like he's standing like right right in front of Billy Piper, and his hair gets sticky uppy for just like a brief moment. I'm like, how are you? Like yeah, little no. bed hair. Just just like get to just like how are you? Um, it's know, like a spider <laughs> sense, but the Doctor sense yeah, roses nearby. <laughs> 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 um, in all seriousness, no. He doesn't really have much to do in this, I don't think. Like, beyond getting married to Queen Elizabeth I, like, how much does he actually bring to this in retrospect? Yeah. See... It's just it's just really him and Matt Smith, but again, like, he doesn't exactly have too much to do. He's just sort yeah. of there. It's... I mean, oh. it's... <sighs> there is a little bit of comedy that I quite like. Um, so, this is my little bit of trivia for this. Um... If you look very carefully at the Tenth Doctor Sonic in this one, you know, it's a very iconic design. It's also yeah. wrong in this episode. <laughs> um, right. You know, if you you know where whenever you rewatch it, if you look if you look at the handle, it's actually yellow as opposed to silver. All so, right. so behind the scenes, there was uh, th- th- this is down to the prop makers um, screwing up, and all of them should you know be sacked and all that sort of stuff and caned and. Stoned in the street. Ken um, stoned and fired. <laughs> um, but yeah, they got, they got the handle wrong. Um, so there wasn't enough time to uh, change it before filming, so they put it out. What makes it even funnier, though, is that the company character options that does all the toys and stuff, Yeah, they saw that and thought, we could re-release the 10th Doctor Sonic with the yellow handle. And make it out oh, as if it's a new no. thing. So they did. No. And and even that was wrong as well because no. the buttons are in the wrong place. So so what so what you actually get is an inaccurate toy of an inaccurate prop. <laughs> <laughs> double the inaccuracy, double the price. <laughs> you couldn't get any more British if you even tried. Like honestly, no, you God. really couldn't. Jesus Christ. No. Wrong prop. Let's make a wronger toy. Yeah. Speaking of a slightly altered prop that is somehow played with played played, played by the same actress, uh, Rose is back ish. I call her a prop. That's actually me being like really really rude. She's not too bad. Yeah. Um. So obviously with the announcement that David Tennant was coming back alongside Billy Piper, people were immediately like, "Oh my God, it's the Tenth Doctor and Rose." No, it's not because we don't need to see that again. <laughs> no, we've had plenty of that. No, um, so props to Stephen Moffat for actually coming up with a genius move of having the moments um, be a projection of Bad Wolf as opposed to Rose Side, which granted the whole Bad Wolf thing is completely pointless, like it doesn't do anything, like beyond like the weird little eye thing at one point, otherwise it could have just been Rose, frankly. Yeah. Um, I do actually really like her in this though, like I, I mean I really like her, her interplay with the War Doctor, that's actually really, really cool. And how basically all this episode hinges on her. Tech definitely, <laughs> yeah. It's I was gonna say it's very hinged on just Rose when you think about it, but I think that's probably why I've grown a bit more attached to that episode. It's just like the whole thing with Rose and the War Doctor. I really like it, surprisingly. 
Yeah, and especially someone who's not really been big on Raws ever, frankly. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good usage, to be honest. Um, we also get uh, a very unusual choice of monster to go to go with the 50th. Uh, the Zygons make their second appearance in Doctor Who history. Um, I think it was I... a pretty bold thing, really. Oh, I loved this. I thought. I, I mean, the. I mean, the design is amazing. Oh yeah, like, like it's... don't get me wrong. The design and stuff like this was awesome as hell. And considering we really haven't had enough of Zygons, like, mm-hmm. I mean, what was this? this? This was like the second appearance of them in like God knows yeah. how many years. Literally, their first appearance was in nineteen seventy something. It might have been nineteen seventy four. Might have actually been like really early. Pre- Tom I Baker. think it was like a fourth Doctor uh, episode, yeah, wasn't terror, it? it? was like Attack terror, of the Zygons. Terror, terror of the Zygons. Of the Zygons. Uh, that's it. Terror yeah. of the Zygons. Oh yeah, because it's Sarah Jean and Harry Sullivan. I think in that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, the design is pretty much just identical to the original. It's just modernized a little bit, uh, which I really like. Um, I also like how their story actually ties into the rest of the episode. Anyway, it's not just like an it's not just like an off, an offshoot thing. It all connects together, which is really nice. Um, yeah. The Time Lord art I find is kind of hilarious. Like <laughs> bigger on the inside artwork, I think is pretty funny. Um, I mean, it feeds into at the time because this was shot in three D as well and was released in three D in cinemas. So you think oh, that's that's actually quite clever to actually incorporate that into the episode and not just make it cheap um even even the effect in 2d still works pretty well i think um but but gratefully uh we do have payoff to to the zygon story in the future which you'll get to look forward to um no spoilers you're nearly there um but the one i do want to talk about actually is the ending Mm -hmm. i'm not I've still never been sure on this one, to be honest. So, this still has, like, one of the most controversial decisions in Doctor Who history to just reverse the ending of the Time War. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't mind this in practice. Like, it's nice that there's, like, a bit of weight that's lifted. Mm. But... <laughs> It does rob <laughs> but... any character <laughs> developments of 9 and 10 completely out of the window. It's like, oh, you're feeling sad about it. You're going to fucking save them in a couple of years. Like... <laughs> feeling sad? We'll just reverse that. Yeah, that's like the Stephen Moffat way. <laughs> that's the written Stephen on... Moffat way. Written on his bloody T-shirt. Um, I mean, he did actually say, like, the, the Doctor would always find a way. That is just who the Doctor is. I'm like, yeah, but that kind of defeats the point of the whole thing. Like, he does it because there's no other choice. Um, yeah. I've always uh, found it really weird, that thing, because he just, like... It, as you say, it's just pointless in some ways, because he just... The whole character of the Doctor would just be pointless, especially when 9 and 10 with the Time War. It's like, oh, you know... Like, even with, like, older Doctors, like, the mentioning of the Time War and stuff, but you just reverse it, it's like, well, you've just made, like, this character's existence nearly pointless if you've done yeah. this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. I mean, again, I, I mean, yeah, I, found, I found it awesome at the time, and I did, like, you know, I was cheering along with this, but then in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, that's something I'm not big on. Um, also, with a very interesting thing that Stephen Moffat said, I might, I might leave that until Series 8. When, when we discuss that, maybe, maybe series nine. Ooh. Ooh. Why would I wait until series nine? You'll find out. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think this episode still works for the most part. Um, oh, yeah, mm. and you get Tom Baker as well as a far, far flung version of the Doctor that's actually pretty hilarious, quite frankly. The curator. Yeah, I like I like the idea that he's just kind of retired and he's now working in in a museum. That feels like the that feels like like the definitive end for him. <laughs> yep. But yeah, National Gallery, which I have now been to, which is kind of hilarious. I'm like, yeah, we were in this bit. I've seen this bit in Doctor Who. This is actually pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
as I say, I still I still really enjoy this one for the most part. Um, I think you're more positive on it than I am, though. I don't know if that's now changed because I've because I've had like the habits have changed your mind. For well, some I, when I said like I I like it for the most part, it is generally mixed. Like yeah, I do like it as a fiftieth. But there's parts of it that just really don't add up, especially the time war stuff. Like over the years, like yeah, I've, like as a kid, like yeah, it was brilliant. I think every kid was like that. But as mm-hmm. you get older, then you look back and you think, okay, this doesn't really make sense at all. Why yes. would they do this? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I can definitely agree with that. There's definitely bits of it that I'm just like, eh, why did you do that? But overall, there's like a celebration of 50 years. I think it actually works pretty well. And they just about get in all of the Doctors without it being a bit weird. Um, kind of works. And you do get Peter Capaldi and his attack eyebrows a month early. Like, I remember watching that and everyone just went nuts. Um, I, I remember it very well. Those eyebrows. Um, obviously, other things we got around the time of the 50th, we obviously got... Um, the Knight of the Doctor mini sword that prevailed, I think it was like a week before. Um, again, no, no setup for who was going to be in this one. They just knew it was about the Doctor and something to do with the Time War or some stuff like that. And they don't say which one it is. And yep. I'm, <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie, I watched this on my phone for the first time um, when I was busy doing something else and I nearly dropped the phone. When I saw the Paul McGann rocks up. <laughs> yep. I wasn't yeah. expecting it, put it that way. I was not expecting it. Because, I've like, on, never I watched it on on iPlayer. And, like, I saw, obviously, like, the screenshot was of Paul McGann, but, like, I didn't realise it was Paul McGann at the time. I was yeah. like, he looks very familiar. I'm pretty sure I've seen him in a film. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really well done. It's easily one of the best stories from Doctor Who just full up. I think it works really well. Um, and no offence, the Eighth Doctor in that costume, far superior to the one in, in the TV movie. It just looks so much more badass, oh, yeah. frankly. Total agreement there. Total just, agreement. Just bring him back at some point, please. Like, don't, don't have him just have two appearances on screen. <laughs> I'd like a third, like for the love of God. Um, that being said, I do actually think it would have actually been quite interesting because we all thought he was the one who ended the time war. I think I think that one would have been quite good as well. That would have been pretty funny, and might and might and might worked a bit better. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, as I say, I also watched this again, which was an an adventure in space and time, which you said you haven't seen this, have you? No, doesn't no. doesn't sound familiar. No. So this, so this was written by Mark Gatiss. So this is a dramatization of the origins of Doctor Who um, set in the year, in, in the William Hartnell years when he's um, cast as the character, some of the stories, some of the behind the scenes issues and what and what not and him being replaced by Patrick Troughton. Um Absolutely beautiful. Like it's an absolute, it's like one of the, I mean I can't really call it a biopic because it's not really. Um, but as far as I know a lot of what happens in this is true to life um mm. and it still works really well um i did send you the uh, the image of me watching it with the with the mondasian side man having a <laughs> having, having a, a cigarette oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, god damn it yeah it's it's a beautiful costume it's absolutely beautiful um, i don't even care like that is a really cool side man costume yeah. i don't care what people say definitely better than bloody series eight cyberman Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Cyber. Iron Cyber Cybus. Iron. Cybus Man. Cybus Man. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you also have David Bradley as William Hartnell. And he's brilliant. Like, he's oh, just yeah. perfect. My God. Um, you, you also have Brian Cox as Sidney Newman, who's the guy who actually came up with some of the ideas for the, the science fiction serial that would become known as, Do- as Doctor Who who specifically said, I don't want any bug-eyed monsters. None of that. Oh. <laughs> well, and then you get uh... the Daleks. And there's a great moment where like, he's reading the script for the Daleks, and he's like, re- and he's, like reading it out loud as they're like, building um, the props for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's really good, to be honest. I really like it. 
Um, I'll definitely give it a watch. Um, yeah, it's it's in my watch list for definite, but I I'm just kind of waiting to to get through a bit more Doctor Who, a bit more classic Doctor Who. Mm. Ugh, God. Um, we, well, uh, now I'm compelled to because I'm on like series two of the William Hartnell stuff, so I just want to finish it. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna be here for a couple of years, mate. Oh God, a couple <laughs> of years, Jesus, an eternity. Yeah. Some of the length of these episodes, by God. Um, as we mentioned before, you do get the Five Ish Doctors reboot, um, which plays on the fact that we didn't get any classic Doctors in the 50s, so they turn it into a comedy, and it's absolutely hilarious. In fact, I'd honestly say it's probably one of the best things to come out with the 50th, quite frankly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which I kind of yep. believe I'm saying that. Um, we also got Doctor Who with the Proms, which I actually listened to um, on BBC Radio, or whichever one it is at the time, um, because I'd watched the 2010 one, which I loved, like, I mean, I, I don't usually go for the proms, but just listening to like, the Doctor Who music play live is pretty awesome. Um, and also because there was a lot of good music in, in Series 7, so we got to hear a bit of that. Um, there was that other short that they did, uh, The Last Day, um, which, eh, didn't have to watch, to be honest. It's fairly meh. Fairly meh. But, but... Let's talk about the death of actor Matt Smith in the time of the Doctor. Uh, oh boy. This, this one's quite special for me because, as I say, I didn't become a Hooven until 2010. So this is the first regeneration story that I've had to watch live, like, mm. as is, on the day. Um, on Christmas Day as well. Like, I think I've just, oh, yeah. I hadn't really done that very often. So, so I literally just like slipped away for an hour and I came back in tears. Like, properly bad tears. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we'll start with Dan's thoughts. Right. Put it this way, Reagan. Uh-huh. This episode almost topped the supposed death of Rose Tyler from Series 2. Oh, really? Yeah, I was in absolute bits on rewatch. Okay. Like, it, it is such a heart-melting episode... And I hate them for breaking my heart. <laughs> like, it's so bloody emotional. Like, by God. <laughs> I love everything about it. And I didn't actually watch it because at the time, like, I was very mixed on Doctor Who. Right. It wasn't because of Matt Smith or anything like that. Like, I just noticed a decline in episode quality over the years. So I was a bit like... Mm. So... Upon rewatching it, I mean, it's been years since I've watched this. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> the emotions. Yeah, I God. was. I'd be like, the terrible Cyberman. Every emotion possible. <laughs> yeah, general. Um, I think it's good. I don't think it's great. I think it's doing about five billion things, um, in an hour. That's a bit difficult. Do you know what it is? Um, it's honestly just like the lone time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's definitely it's basically not the doctor all. just facing off against every enemy possible. <laughs> well, to be honest, I mean it's it makes sense because now they actually reference the whole regeneration thing, which for people who don't know, this was first brought up, and I think it was in the Deadly Assassin, I think, in nineteen seventies or nineteen eighties or something, uh, where it's just suggested that. It's, the Time Lords have 12 regenerations, so 13 lives. was never referenced again. Mm. Um, and now we're getting into the 50th. We're like, oh, so is Doctor Who going to end in like five years? <laughs> um, which even I thought at the time, I was like, oh, you're going to have to. But then also 10th Doctor's regenerated twice and you've introduced the War Doctor. So people should have clicked on pretty much immediately that, oh, okay, we're actually dealing with technically the final incarnation of the Doctor. Oh, given some other things that happened a little later on, that's not actually the case. <laughs> God! Ugh, talk about retconning or shitconning. Um, shitconning. So, I think it makes sense that, you know, at the end of his life, yeah, he's going to face absolutely everything. But I also really like the fact that he just dies of old age. That's... I know, the irony! <laughs> yeah. I was like, Matt Smith finally looks the age... Of, of the Doctor when he's like just over 2,000 years old. Um, even that makeup actually still kind of works. 
I mean, it's a damn sight better than the, the There's David definitely one, some three. parts where, like... Well, yeah, I was going to say with Series 3, like, it, it's, it depends on it. Like, because there are shots where it looks fine, and then there's others where it looks a bit weird. This was the case with this one as well. Like, there are some shots with it that look fine, and then there's some that, like, you look as if you just had, like, plasticine slopped onto your face. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm also like a really, I mean, this is just me getting nitpicky. I don't like the costume that he wears, like, for the majority of the episode, because he just wears the one from the snowman, and I'm like, oh, could you not have just worn the, the other one? Please? I prefer if he went back to, like, the cool costume, but yeah. Yeah. That being said, I do like the fact that Stephen Moffat set up the perfect way to bring back the 11th Doctor, even when Matt Smith is in his 90s, because... Yep. Because the Eleven Doctor's on Trends Law for 900 years. Pretty much perfect, frankly. Um, speaking of Trends Law, that entire thing got uh, wrapped up within two episodes and people thought it was going to be in years. <laughs> like, I remember yep. watching the Next Time trailer after Dear the Doctor and he was just like, this planet, what's it called? Trends Law. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's been five months, but that's all right then. <laughs> it's fine. Never mind. <laughs> Never um, mind now. <laughs> All sorted. I mean, we probably should have clicked on with the fact that um, in the name of the Doctor, like, the console room that he's in with the time stream is just the 11th Doctor one. Um, and you can even actually see on the on the CGI model of the giant one um, the same crack in the window as well, which I don't know if that's still in these ones. Um, that being said, I'm also questioning as to um, how much of that episode actually exists now, considering that mm. the Doctor survives this one. Um, TARDIS and all um, but I, as I say it's doing way too much in an hour like it's trying to wrap up way too many yeah, things it really really does and it's a shame mm-hmm. because it could if, if it just wasn't trying to do like a gazillion things in a single special it would have been great yeah. but that's, that's I think what suffered a lot with series 7 stuff because you know we had a character who was a plot device. And still is. <laughs> and pretty much still is. I mean, you got to love how they try really hard to, like, try and develop Clara's family and it just doesn't work. No, and it's pointless because you're just adding more plot devices to an already existent plot device. Mm. Fun bit of trivia, though. The actress who plays her gran has appeared in Doctor Who before and I think was in the 70s and the 80s as well. Um, but... Uh, her stepmother. So we'll, we'll we'll just go with the wicked stepmother because she's just rude. Yes. Um, she's actually the voice of the Atmos system in the Sontaran two parter in series four. Is she? Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. I'm like wow. You're still trying to kill people. What the hell? <laughs> On Christmas. The irony. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They try really hard to try and give her a family. I'm like, it's too little, too late. <laughs> But it's Sorry. like, why? Why should you really give a damn in the, in any way? Like, yeah, it's not Two like it's though. it's not like it's Wilf. We're not going there. We're past that now. We'll talk about that next year. Um, two things though. Um, the Matt Smith's wig. I hate it in this. It's <laughs> <laughs> now two episodes concurrently where I hear the Doctor's hair. <laughs> David Tennant and now Matt Smith. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know he shaved his head for a film with Ryan Gosling, but I don't give a damn. It looks terrible. Um, we also have, we also have Matt Smith naked. Yep. Anyway, um... <laughs> we've also had David Tennant naked, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's oh whatever. <laughs> uh, I can't even go there. So um, we get the silence back. Yeah, yep. wearing turtlenecks. <laughs> <laughs> Silence and turtlenecks. <laughs> I didn't realise that. Do we I even need, need to mention the wooden Cyberman? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I know. It doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> Do you know what doesn't make any sense in the oh. slightest bit with that Cyberman, right? Number one, aren't they meant to be cybernetic? So, uh-huh. number two, he has a flamethrower in his arm. He is made of wood. 
Yeah. He has a fire hazard to himself. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, what the hell? I did... <laughs> I mean, look, no. it is, I mean, it does look pretty funny. I'll give him that. And I, I, I think that was the point. But at the same time, I don't think they're going to sink down to that level of, like, well, we need to get through. We'll just make one of our own made out of wood. It's fine. We can like, do it, that. It that was, makes sense. Look, it was fine with the stone Daleks and stuff like this. That was acceptable. Oh, the stone Dalek was pretty badass. <laughs> that was cool. Wooden Cyberman, No. Yeah. Especially when irony is involved that he has a flamethrower and he is just a fire hazard to himself. And ironically, that's what happens. Exactly. <laughs> um, it, uh, also, I really hate the fact that the, the, like, the setup... I don't think, don't think we even referenced this in, in, this, uh, in last week's one with the fact that the Daleks just forget the Doctor's very existence. And that's just completely forgotten about. And this one's like, oh yeah, we got... Because all, isn't all that through bloody... Um, Asylum of the Daleks because when he goes back to the Dalek Parliament all the Daleks are like who are you? <laughs> yeah. Who are in you? A pretty, you know, in a pretty awesome scene I'll give him that and it's just pointless again like screw but you. again why do Daleks have a Parliament? It's weird but I also yeah, have like a on. major I also have a major continuity issue with this one again because I'm, I'm a, you know I'm a Whovian critic nitpicker that's just kind of the thing you've probably gotten after the last few episodes Um. So in Day of the Doctor, you have um, little Dalek um, attack pod things flying around. Um, yeah. Never been seen before, so clearly just for the time war. Um, all of a sudden, they're flying around in this one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, again, again, the least of my concerns. <laughs> it's it's um, more or less like a last minute thing, that like, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Um, it's like, okay, well, we, we want like something new Dalek-y new Dalek-y things. So let's just add in Dalek pod things that have only yeah. ever been seen in one other episode. Yeah. In a time that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, just go with it. <laughs> so, obviously this one, um, as I said, deals with the whole regeneration thing. Um, and the time was just give him a bunch of CGI regenerations. Like, that he just sucks up in his mouth as if it's like a yoghurt. Um, <laughs> as if it's a froob <laughs> which in fairness he's like very very old at that point he probably couldn't even do that it would probably hurt really really bad like <laughs> the the doctor just sucks the doctor just sucks on a Gallifreyan froob oh sure that was so close to being a horrifying hor- horrifying <laughs> visage oh god <laughs> context god damn it Dan context 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 um but yeah so now we have the actual regeneration, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Look, I'll still, I'll still weep at this. Not nearly as much as I used to. Um, I'm still hit and miss on um, seeing the weird like thing with Amy, which I, I do actually find it quite funny that when Karen Gillan does pop up for her obligatory cameo, um, both her and Matt Smith are both wearing wigs. I find that quite <laughs> funny. <laughs> Because she shaved her head for Guardians of the Galaxy, and then he shaved it for, yeah. the Ryan, for the Ryan Gosling thing, and there's just Clara in the background. It's like I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the Doctor's on some like psychedelic trip. Yeah, which in fairness, that is just Clara for the entire episode. It's like I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm just being <laughs> yeah. over here, and the senders back home twice. The bastard. This girl is a Dalek, a governess character. <laughs> oh, God, she's Clara. just everything. And and yes, also nothing, absolutely nothing. An impossible um, girl. Oh, impossible, right? Impossible to feckin' write. My <laughs> God. But anyway, um, but yeah, that I mean that entire final speech is really, 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 really great. I really like it. Um, yeah. And I still lose it whenever he in that final bit when he briefly looks at the camera and says, "I will always remember when the Doctor was me." And I'm just like. I still do. I still do. My heart. <laughs> My heart. My heart is gone. <laughs> Give me it back. Shattered. Obliterated. Um, yeah. Um, and then we get the attack eyebrows for, for 45 seconds. Um, What's with the eyebrows? They're so cross. <laughs> 
You could take off bottle tops with these. <laughs> They're cross. <laughs> I kind of do the accent. Oh, be warned, there's going to be a lot of like Capaldi accents during the Capaldi era that the, the, like, we end up talking about. It's just going to be a thing. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's, as I say, it's juggling way too much, frankly, yeah. for its own good. And I find it's quite horrible, the fact that uh, Jodie Whittaker gets a 90-minute episode to, to, like, cap off her era when there's going to be nothing in it. And then Matt Smith gets 60 minutes and too much, frankly. Yeah. Um, that's, that is what we call mismanagement. Or this is what we call the BBC. Ugh, the BBC. Um, yeah, as I say, similar to Dear the Doctor, I think you're definitely more positive on this than I am, to say the least. Again, it's, it's more of less just for the last bits, like with the regeneration... And things like that. I mean, that there's some things that just really don't make a lot of sense. But again, that's just what the what the previous one and this one have in common. There's just things in it that you're like, why is this in? Like a wooden Cyberman, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> why uh, yeah, yeah. wooden? You're never gonna let that one go, are you? No, I'm not because it just baffles me. Right? It is a cybernetic creature. It's a made cybernetic of metal. Creature. Metal and technology, not bloody wood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the fact it has an inbuilt flamethrower too. He's a fire hazard to himself. And ironically, <laughs> that is his death. Uh, we're just the doctor have, like... just makes him combust by reversing the flamethrower. I think just for fun, I'm just going to have a time call dedicated specifically to the points where you saw ranting about the wooden bloody Cyberman. <laughs> I just... <laughs> You know what it is, right? The Dalek pod continuity is a nitpick, right? That wooden Cyberman. Oof. It's, it by is just God. Be bullshit. <laughs> yes. It is. Like, you may as well just bloody not. It's like it's like having a plastic Dalek. <laughs> like all made the doctors could just dog. melt him. <laughs> like, for God's sake. <laughs> Or it's, it's like having a like an Auton mannequin made out of bloody metal. There probably is one. Would, <laughs> oh god, there probably is. Oh god. Yeah. Um, but yes, that is our thoughts on the fiftieth anniversary specials. Um, as I said, that is the end of the eleventh Doctor era. That's been really fun to talk about. Um, yeah. So as I say, um, in about a month, um, due to um, complications with schedules and holidays and stuff like that we won't be talking about doctor Who f- um until october is it october yes october um we also won't have an episode next week uh to my knowledge unless things change change with your holiday but otherwise um we won't be back until i believe will be the 11th of september um depending on how hungover i am because i think i'm a, i think i'm thinking i think i'm at a wedding do the day before so uh i'm probably going to be quite Headache, even by the evening, to be honest. I'll probably, I'll probably just be like, oh, just screw it, I'll just keep on drinking. <laughs> um, um, so, yes, on that episode, um, initially I was actually going to talk about the future of the MCU, but then I realised we keep talking about Marvel. Let's talk about the rivals that aren't doing very well. Let's talk about DC. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> especially now that everything's been going to shit. <laughs> the detective cancellations, not DC Comics, and you want detective cancellations Ooh. extended universe. <laughs> uh, but yes, we'll be talking about uh, the future of the DCEU, where they really need to change their name still. Um, what future? On the 11th, of, on the 11th of, of September. But until then, that is it from us. Thank you very much for listening, uh, or slash watching. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all that crap. Um, support us in any way you want or don't. You know, it's entirely up to you. I can't, I can't force you. It's free. That's how it works, isn't it? We aren't, we aren't actually getting paid for this currently. Um, one day, maybe. One day. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you uh, very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>